Hello friends, Eli Hibbett here with the Pulling Your Homework Physics Series Podcast. If you're looking to prepare, review, or gain an added edge or point of view about topics in physics, then look no further. Tune in each week to unlock your understanding of the physical world surrounding us. And now, let's dive right in. Hello everybody. How is everybody feeling today? I am your host, Eli Hibbett. Back at you at a uh, part one edition of the Halloween episodes for the Pulling Your Homework Physics Series podcast. And... uh, yeah, I was. I've been thinking about this since last year. Last year we did a episode called "Another Dimension," where we talked about what it would be like to live in four dimensions, and so try to you know dig into a little bit of the uh, not necessarily a paranormal, but you know kind of you know, something that may jibe with the whole vibe of Halloween. You know what I mean? So uh, this year I have for you something heavily physics related, but. Um, also kind of on the edge of Halloween-ish kind of stuff. So I found this live science article entitled The Nine Biggest Unsolved Mysteries in Physics. So I thought leading up to Halloween, I would do three per episode and we'll drop three right up to Halloween. So I like unsolved mystery kind of stuff. It's really fun. But it also, uh, you know, this is what... The challenges are going to be, you know, this generation of physicists are going to have to face and understand, and they are not easy problems. So, here we go. I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a introduction to this. You know, this is the beginning of the article, and then we'll kind of go through each one of each section of the article, and then dive in a little deeper on each one. So, here we go. Here is the uh, the intro. In 1900, the British physicist Lord Kelvin is said to have pronounced, There is nothing new to be discovered in physics now. All that remains is more and more precise measurement. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Within three decades, quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of relativity had revolutionized the field. Today, no physicist would dare assert that our physical knowledge of the universe is near completion. To the contrary, each new discovery seems to unlock a Pandora's box of even bigger even deeper physics questions. These are our picks for the most profound and open questions of all. It's a pretty good list, I gotta say. Uh, So here are 9, 8, and 7. So number 9. What is dark energy? No matter how astrophysicists crunch the numbers, the universe simply doesn't add up. Even though gravity is pulling inward on space-time, the fabric of the cosmos, it keeps expanding outward faster and faster. To account for this, astrophysicists have proposed an invisible agent that counteracts gravity by pushing space-time apart. They call it dark energy. It is the most widely accepted model for dark energy. It is a cosmological constant, an inherent property of space itself, which has negative pressure driving space apart. Does this sound ridiculous to anybody else? (laughs) As space expands, more space is created and with it more dark energy. Based on the observed rate of expansion, scientists know that the sum of all the dark energy must make up more than 70% of the total contents of the universe. But nobody knows how to look for it. So I understand where they're coming from on this, but like... Can't isn't it just can't we just say we don't know what the heck is going on instead of coming up with something like this? Like Einstein threw in a cosmological constant and it was the biggest mistake of all time. And the word cosmological constant flies around all over the place when you talk about dark energy. And it's just like we made this mistake over here and now we're gonna make it again over here. Like but it's actually a pretty interesting uh idea. And it so The universe is expanding. This is a widely held um, idea. And we can tell that because of the shift in the background radiation, which we consider to be the edge of the known universe. And this is light that's still emitting from... kind of from the Big Bang, I guess you'd say. But what is pushing it apart? You know, what... If we have gravity, if we have massive objects in the universe, shouldn't there be something kind of decelerating it and pulling it backwards? Well, from what we measure, the answer is certainly no. And uh, so they 
the scientists and physicists and astrophysicists want to kind of consolidate, you know, what we're measuring with what we think. And so they've created this inherent property of space itself called dark energy. And the amount of energy that it would take to jibe with current measurements means that the, the current amount of dark energy must make up more than 70% of the total contents of the universe. But no one's ever seen it, and no one knows how to look for it. So if you can figure that out, oh man, is there a big pile of money waiting for you. So dark energy, kind of a cool thing. And in, in the same vein as that, we have number eight, which is what is dark matter? So let me give you a little bit about dark matter. Evidently, about 84% of the matter of the universe does not absorb or emit light. Dark matter, as it's called, cannot be seen directly, and it hasn't yet been detected by indirect means either. Instead, dark matter's existence and properties are inferred from its gravitational effects on visible matter, radiation, and the structure of the universe. This shadowy substance is thought to pervade the outskirts of galaxies and may be composed of weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, yeah, W-I-M-P, weakly interacting massive particles. Worldwide, there are several detectors on the lookout for WIMPs, but so far, not one has been found. Uh, so this is kind of the same idea. So we, so we got, what is it, 70% of the known universe is dark energy. So that leaves 30% for the rest of us. And 84% of that <laughs> is dark matter, apparently. Does not uh, emit light. So that leaves... What do we, what do we have left? I believe it's 4.5... 4 4.9% of the rest. Everything else that you can see in the universe, which is an unbelievable amount, as ordinary matter, regular matter, and that only accounts for 4.9% of what is in the universe. So we got dark matter, and so kind of the way that was explained to me that dark matter works is when you calculate orbits and when you look at the behavior of large structures such as galaxies and nebula, nebulae, nebula, things like this, you know, monster, monster structures, when, as they move, if you look at their orbital dynamics, they move they don't follow classical like newtonian or even like we've we've modified newtonian orbital dynamics a little bit through the years but it it doesn't they don't work that way they don't move around each other in the way that you would think and in, in the way that perfectly describes the motion of the planets and so they act as if they are much 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 heavier like 84 percent heavier or they're they're moving around something or they they're moving as if they have a certain mass which is much higher than what they are measured to have they are moving around something which has much more mass than it's measured to have which is not a black hole uh and so people are like well what the heck is it because everything that we can from everything we can see we're measuring it right now guys we've never been to a galaxy i mean it's a little it's a little egocentric to think that you can measure everything <laughs> in the galaxy. I mean, we, we do a very good job. We use mass uh, spectrometry, spectrometry, and, you know, you can infer quite a bit about the mass of things, but, I don't know, dark matter, another thing. It, but everybody seems convinced of it, and it's actually, I think dark matter is a much better idea than dark energy, because dark energy seems to be kind of just a fudge factor that we're using right now until we discover what the heck is going on, but dark matter really seems to be there. It doesn't emit light, but it's part of these monster structures that change the way it behaves. But again, so far, nothing has been found. Nobody has been able to measure it directly. So... We got dark energy, which nobody knows anything about, and the dark matter, which nobody knows anything about. And that's, what is it, 95% of the universe <laughs> that we don't understand in any capacity. So, if you think that we know everything there is to know, think again. We know about 5%, maybe. And even that we don't even understand very well. So, that's number 9 and number 8. Number 7, I think, is my favorite of the whole list. Nine biggest unsolved mystery in physics. And I think this should be number one. But why is there an arrow on time? Time moves forward because of a property of the universe called entropy, roughly defined as the level of disorder, which only increases, and so there is no way to reverse a rise in entropy after it has occurred. 
The fact that entropy increases is a matter of logic. There are more disordered arrangements of particles than there are ordered arrangements, and so as things change, they tend to fall into disarray. Makes sense, right? But the underlying question here is, why was entropy so low in the past? But differently, why was the universe so ordered at its beginning, when a huge amount of its energy was crammed together in a small amount of space? So it, it, it does beg the question, you know, it does seem that you, so entropy is a concept in thermodynamics, which is roughly defined as the level of order of things. It has a lot to do with energy and heat and how things permeate, but let's just, let's just think about it as the level of order of things. And so one way to think about this is if you have, let's say, an egg or a glass full of water on it, these are like really the best ways to describe it. If you have an egg or a glass of water on table, and you... Well, let's let's start with something a little simpler. If you take a chair and you knock it over, you can put it back. You can put it back up. And that there are and that's what's known as a reversible reaction. Something that you do, and you can put it back to its initial conditions, and there is no problem whatsoever. Now, there exist things in this universe which are called irreversible reactions, and the best way to visualize them is as so. Take an egg or take a glass of water and put it on a table and knock it off the table, and it's going to smash and go everywhere and make a mess. And that's the best way to think of entropy, is that it makes a mess. And there is nothing you can do. There is not... Super glue does not count. Like, there is nothing you can do to put... To run that the other direction. And there is no way, no how, it will never happen that the, the universe will allow that the egg or the cup of water will fall back up onto the table and exactly go back to its initial conditions. And so this is what's called an irreversible reaction. Now this has a lot more to do with like energy transfer and certain types of engines and that kind of stuff. But it's a very good way to visualize it. Uh, don't always think about it as, like, human-defined order, because it doesn't really make sense that way, but entropy is a quantity, and no matter what, the entropy always goes up. We cannot go reverse. And so that means, at the beginning of the universe, the entropy was very, very low. And so, that why, does, why do we have an arrow on time? Is our, we have space and time, which Einstein called space-time. And you have three dimensions of space. You know, let's call it vertical, horizontal, and depth. And then we have time. Now, in spatial dimensions, you can go forwards and backwards. You can go side to side. You can go up and down. But in time, you can only go one way. And there's really no changing that. Now, one thing that's really, really, really interesting is... There is a theory that if you travel faster than light, you go the other way in time. You're going the other way. And if you go faster than light, so right now we have no way to achieve the cosmic speed limit, which is the speed of light. So if you are going slower than the speed of light, there is no way to travel faster than the speed of light. But there is a theory that if you're traveling faster than the speed of light, there is no way to travel slower than it. Which is really, really, really cool. Because they're going the other way. They're going backwards in time. Their entropy is decreasing all the time. But nothing like that exists in our universe. But it's kind of something that... People say this a lot in mathematics. It falls out of the math of if you calculate things the other way around. So those are three really great questions that nobody knows the answer to. I'm I'm certainly not going to pretend like I do. What is dark energy? What is dark matter? And why is there an arrow on time? So there we go. Start to get you into a physics Halloween kind of mood. Carve your pumpkin with a question of an unsolved physics mystery. So there we go. That's going to do it for today. And I will be back at you guys tomorrow with another three. So until then, stay frosty, stay in the zone, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Take care.